Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Hellblaze, at thehellblaze.com. 100% all natural products from lotions, soaps, foot soaks, bath bombs, and much, much more. Use the promo code Goodfellow One Boxing. Tell them your boy CJ Goodfella since you get 18% off. We out. All right, let's get into some boxing talk. I'm going to go talk some Broner. His fight date or fight month is coming up. Ryan Garcia remix fight date with Luke Campbell. And Riggin Dive is going to take on John Rio Casson Moore for his WBO title. So let's talk about all that. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. Appreciate the love and support. And don't forget, all our live stream is going down on Goodfellas Sports TV 2.0. And sports streams plus all the live streams there. You can check me out on Sportscaster. The links in the description. Fastest way there is to hit the, the drop down box, uh, hit the Sportscaster link, create a profile. It's free, and follow me on there. I appreciate that. But apparently, um, Canelo and Calvin Smith out the home. They will be fighting at the San Antonio Alamo Dome. There's also was some rumors they could fight at the uh, AT and T Stadium where Dallas Cowboys play. And I think. That's a good venue for them. Um, Alamo Dome is huge. Don't forget they got Minute Maid Park in Texas. They got some of the biggest, you know, stadiums in Texas. They can they can fight in several different stadiums. But um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's a fight that a lot of people are looking forward to. I heard that uh, was name Joe Gallagher, Callum Smith trainer said they going for the knockout as you should if you fight Canelo. You should press and go for the knockout. We all know he has stamina issues, but. I mean, when you take as much punishment as he took over the years, you know, he'd been in boxing as a teenager. I mean, of course you, you should press him, but it sounds easier than, it's easier said than done. Kyle Smith got a 6'3", what, a 5'6", five, five, a height advantage. He should use his reach, but then again, you know you're not going to beat this dude on the cards, on the decision. So it's imperative that you, you know, be aggressive, land clean shots and try to stop him, but also that can work against his game plan too. And you can give up your reach and your height trying to bang with Canelo and get him out of there. But if you ain't trying to knock him out, you ain't going to win outboxing him and going tit for tat like Laura and uh, Floyd Mayweather did. So, I mean, like I said, when a Mexican or Mexican-American or any Hispanic fighter is fighting in Texas, they're really starting with three or four shit in some situations, a five-point lead. So, Callum Smith got to know, you know, where he at. And I think they got a great idea. Trying to knock him out in the Alamo Dome. Alamo Dome, they held, they hosted uh, Broner and Madonna, just hosted Tank and uh, Leo Santa Cruz. So it should be a solid fight. I expect Canelo to stop Callum Smith, especially if they got some type of rehydration clause and handicap. Canelo can't beat nobody without a handicap. And people want to say, well, Canelo, number one, one uh, pound for pound. I mean, you can say that all people want to. I'm not shitting on him. I'm just talk, taking the real, talking the real. None of his fans or some of these fake fans out here could tell me you know, what's his most legit win amongst elite top fighters? You know what I'm saying? But then again, Callum Smith is the lineal. Uh, Canelo, you know, going to do what he's going to do. I think he's going to park him. And then I hear he could fight Triple G or he could fight Kalen Plant in uh, May. But, you know, Alamo Dome, good venue. Um, huge stadium. So I wish them nothing but the best. But let's move on. Apparently, Adrian Peterson is supposed to, I mean, Adrian Peterson, Adrian Broner is supposed to be coming back in February versus Ivan Redcash. We know he's in court saying he only had $13 to his name after flashing a whole bunch of money on Instagram and saying his friends gave it to, to him. This fight was supposed to happen like last October, you know what I'm saying? And um, obviously he didn't want to fight him. And then another fight fell out with Rad, Rad Cash and he fought in, Jan in January. So Broner going to be out the ring for a long, long time. I think since, sheesh. Uh, I think Broner been out the ring since January 2019. So, I mean, sheesh. You know, it's going to be hard for him to come back and get in the rhythm. But, you know, he's supposed to be in a uh, setup with a showtime showdown to fight Regis Progress. So um, a lot of people don't see him losing to Ivan Redcast, but it don't look like he's been working or dropping weight. He look a little bit pudgy in, in, uh, in court. But, you know, Adrian Peterson, I'm sorry, Adrian Broner, you know, going to get the bag. And he should stop uh, Ivan Redcast. I think they could be fighting at 140 pounds. So. It should be very, very interesting to see exactly how that fight goes because Adrian Peter, Adrian, <laughs> Adrian Broner ain't fought nobody, ain't really fought in a while, and he don't move his hands no more. But he usually thrives on those C and C plus opponents. You know that's what he do do his thing against. Anytime he step up to a B plus opponent or shit, even a B level opponent, he'll get beat down. So I look forward to him fighting Red Cash, and then if he get past that, he could fight Regis Progress. And I think Progress could be the first guy to stop him. If Progress can continue to make 140 pounds, he should. 
he should beat Adrian Broner, but it don't count if he don't stop him. He got to be the first man to stop Adrian Broner, but, I mean, we'll see. Moving on, moving on, we could talk about Luke Campbell and, uh, you know, Ryan Garcia resetting for January 2nd. So I'm, I'm taking it that Luke Campbell probably didn't pass the COVID testing time where it wasn't enough time for him to get back and train and be ready by December 26th. So they fight one day after uh, New Year's. I'm not exactly sure if it's still going to be at the Fantasy scene, Fantasy Springs Casino Resort. Uh, but, you know, it's a good good fight. I just seen Ryan Garcia on the zone talking about, you know, fighting Luke Campbell, how he want to be surgical and I'll box him if the knockout, come and the knockout comes. He can't help it, but he want to show everybody that he can box in that fight. And, you know, yeah, I don't. I think Ryan Garcia is a talented fighter. I think he should be able to beat Luke Campbell with his natural ability. But then again, you know, I don't think he's that great of a boxer. It's a lot of deficiencies there that we see with his chin popping up and this, that, and the third going on. But I wish him nothing but the best. You know, I'm not going to go for the English muffin over Ryan Garcia, but, you know, with Ryan Garcia, man, when he throws his punches or his chin fly up, it's a lot of fundamental mistakes that he makes that I haven't seen Eddie Renasso clear up yet. But, you know, Ryan Garcia is a dangerous fighter. He can punch a bit. Um, I think some people think, uh, you know, Luke Campbell should win just based off experience and all this, that, and the third. But you know where his his deficiencies at. We know that he don't punch through the target. We know he's not aggressive. Really, it's just seeing Ryan Garcia's deficiencies exposed. Now, if his chin ain't no good, I mean, then we we probably going to be talking about he was uh, he was in the past tense, but – you know, his speed, his foot movement should be good. But what I want to see from him is exactly what he said. I want to see technique. I want to see hands come back home. I want to see him touch him and his chin don't fly up. I want to see his chin tuck. I want to see him work up and down. I want to see his, him use his superior athleticism. That's what people want to see from Ryan Garcia. We want to see him go in and out, side to side, you know, weaving, hitting, don't get hit. And too often his knockouts look like fake phantom punch knockouts. So, I mean, it's good to see him back in the ring January 2nd. I just think he got too much firepower, too much youth for Luke Campbell. But would I count Luke Campbell out of this? Absolutely not. Luke Campbell's a phenomenal fighter. I wish he was a little bit more aggressive. He probably knocked more of his opponents out. But he did just take credit for <laughs> he did take credit for beating up, uh, softening up Lomachenko for Tiafim Lopez. And that was funny because a lot of people had him winning like one or two rounds in that fight. But, I mean, we'll see Ryan Garcia and Luke Campbell. Should be a, a terrific fight. January 2nd. It's supposed to be December Fifth, and moving to you know possibly nineteen twenty six. Now it's going back to December second, so it should be interesting. And um, uh, sound like Luke is or should be recovering from the COVID soon. But uh, yeah, let's let him get his proper training in, and we'll see what happens. We don't want no excuses where Luke get in there, he don't make the weight. But Ryan Garcia out here cheating on his pregnant girlfriend, doing stupid shit. So who knows how focused he is in training? You know what I'm saying? But hey, that is what it is. We can move on. Uh, Regan Dow supposed to be taking on uh Joel uh. John Rio, Cash Moore. I want to see him fight uh, in New Yua, but if Rigandau can beat him, then the New Yua might be up on, might be up next for him. But I think they had 118 pounds. Rigandau to move down again should be an interesting fight. You know, a lot of people still believe in Rigandau. I just think he's a little bit older. But uh, John Rio, Cash Moore ain't ain't that. You know, we don't know how where his deficiencies at. So I can see Rigandau winning this fight, but you know, you kind of probably want to go with the youth, the puncher. Uh, we know Rigandau, he's been on the canvas. I just think it's due to balance and not a chin. So um, it should be it should be interesting. Rigandau got a nice little lead, head, little, little lead right hook. Um, he just don't throw enough punches. What he's going to have to do is he got to take the punch. He has to take the punch of uh, Joe Rayo, Cash Moore, and then he got to let him let him open up and be able to counter him. If he's able to counter Joe Cash Moore, Rigandau still can sleep him or slow him down to it where it's a methodical chess match. Rigandau favored that, favored that. But this dude like to come in your kitchen and beat you up. And that's the issue with Rigandau. He's going to be dealing with a guy that's going to try to be in his kitchen and working. The answer is can Rigandau take the work and can Rigandau catch, slip, or sh and shoot back uh, with the work? I think it's a, a, phen a phenomenal fight. I still want to see a new UI and catch him more. I take a new UI and Rigandau, but, uh, I'm going to go ahead and favor the Filipino fighter in this one because he, he got youth, he got punching power, but Rigandau still got that old man strength, and he still got the ability to counter and knock Joel Rayo Kamora out. So it should be a good fight. Hopefully after this, the winner can take on a new year while he's trying to um, be undisputed in the division. But uh, let me know what you guys think about Canelo and Smith landing in the Alibo Don Broner coming back February versus Ivan Redcash. Also, let me know what you think about 
Uh, Ryan Garcia taking on Luke Campbell, uh, February, in February, no, excuse me, January 2nd. And what you guys think about Rick and Dow taking on Joe Rio, Cash Moore for, uh, there's that Super Bantamweight, uh, WBO title. Appreciate the love, support. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out.